Hi, this is Joe Carapinha at Blue Crow Trading. I want to spend the next few minutes with you discussing range bar charts, uh, the preferred chart type that I use in, in my trading, and the, the same type of chart that is applied to the intraday uh, targets that are shared through Blue Crow Trading uh, on its webpage. The, um, uh, in terms of the, the structure of the, the presentation, I want to cover the, the following aspects. is to discuss the, the range bar charts uh, itself um, and just to provide a little bit uh, a little background over there the next is to provide examples utilizing um, uh, the NASDAQ 100 futures data uh, the e-mini contract uh, in particular uh, or we may actually use also the, the S&P 500 the ES uh, futures data to to discuss the, the difference between uh, minute bars and uh, range bar charts. And then the third area that I want to discuss is static versus dynamic range calculation. <clears throat> and in real time, um, I'll pull up a chart of a minute chart, uh, compare it to a range chart so that uh, you can get a feel for, for how best to set uh, your range um, settings uh, on your range bar charts uh, because that's quite important and, and it will be different for futures or be different for stocks and and for forex and I'll provide you a method on on how to do that uh, the fourth aspect is the time frame or range frame um, and this uh, I feel is a uh, important aspect to consider um, in your trading um, especially if uh, you plan on being profitable um, and I found it exceptionally useful to rather focus on range frame trading and I'll explain exactly what uh, what I mean with that uh, rather than focusing only on on time frame um, and the final point is so uh, range bar charts given that they they don't have time so what do we do with time um, and how do we analyze time within the, the context of uh, range bar charts so that's the, the overview for the the presentation uh, let's move on to the the first uh, couple of bullets and, and that's range bar charts is um, the having worked uh, for quite a long time with your traditional candlesticks um, and as you know uh, candlesticks have an open high low and a close um, and if you're working with a, a one minute candlestick at uh, every minute uh, every additional minute there will be an additional uh, candle that will be created um, and most traders are, are familiar with uh, candlesticks uh, based on on time but what range bar charts do and in particular range bar it isolates price movement and it, it excludes time as as a variable um, in a traditional candlestick there, there are two variables that integrated in there uh, first is uh, price movement and the the next is time time if you're working with a, a one minute chart um, every one minute there'll be an additional candlestick that will be created but then embedded within that uh, one minute time frame will also be price movement so traditionally uh, we are accustomed to seeing price and time combined yet r uh, what range bar charts do they isolate price movement alone and they exclude time um, entirely um, and this I, I found exceptionally useful to look at the the two variables um, uh, independent uh, of each other and the the story that it tells um, is quite different if you compare it to time-based uh, charts um, and I found this as a, as a unique approach to viewing price volatility because um, price is what I'm focused on um, in trading. Um, I am interested in in time, and in subsequent uh, video and other videos in the in the future, I'll address how time features as an important variable in in trading. But mostly, I'm I'm focused on on price and price movement and price volatility. Uh, I'm a day trader. Um, I scalp part of my position. I, I keep on runners for the remaining of the the position and um, I am focused on how price is moving at particular points um, on the on the chart uh, and I'm less concerned about the the time aspect um, in general um, so I found it a, a very unique approach to focus specifically on price volatility um, the next is the um, given that range bar charts are focused on price volatility is that bars will only print when price movement takes place um, if price is not moving at all the range bar will not fluctuate uh, and a new range bar will not create if the uh, minimum amount of ticks that is needed for a range bar to be created um, is not generated off the, the price chart 
um, and I'll give you an example in the the next slide is so given that um, range bar depends on price movement and depends on price volatility um, it would uh, makes sense that the greater volatility there is in the the price chart the more bars that will be created the less price volatility the the less bars are, are going to be created um, and as opposed to the traditional candlestick where uh, in a time frame chart where you have an open high low and close in a range bar you have each of those um, four but uh, you have a high, a low, and a close. Uh, there's also an open, but the, the close must always be either on the low or the high of the, the candle. Um, and that is because the, uh, the tick range that is set in your chart, uh, the range bar will only be created once price moves a minimum of that amount, and it will automatically start at the next tick, which will be the open of the, the next bar, um, and as uh, price continues, um, more range bars will be created. So there's a high, there's a low, and a close, but the close must always be on the the low or the the high, um, and that's quite uh, useful. Um, let's move on to an example. Um, so this is a, a one-minute chart. Uh, this is the the NQ continuous contract, um, and this, um, as you can see, the the time scale here at the at the bottom. This is overnight action, um, and I'm providing you th this example particularly because it's it's an extreme, um, and it shows you how range bars would operate uh, in the extreme, um, and understanding how they um, how they operate in, in the extremes, then you would be able to apply that within the the day context. So this is overnight price action. Um, and starting when the, the market closed here at 16.14, as you can see, very little price action took place. There was a rather large gap up um, um, overnight uh, or just before the, the market opened in the morning. But uh, overall, there was very little price volatility taking place here. Um, that's on a, a minute time frame. If one jumps on to a, um, a range bar chart which, which is a nine tick range bar um, and this is the, the NQ continuous contract um, again we're looking at the exact same time period so the, the day before and the day after and all of this portion of uh, price action that took place overnight is compressed in this single bar over here and this vertical line shows um, the the end of session and the beginning of the the next session sorry let's just move that move that up so all of that price action that took place over several hours is compressed into that single range chart um, and the only way that that happens is uh, th there's a nine tick range chart over here that will only create a new 9 tick range once price movement moves outside of that. So given that all of this price action took place within 9 ticks of a single bar chart, of a single bar um, range bar, that um, action took place in, in a single bar. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm, I'm being clear on, on that, but this price movement uh, over here, as you can see on the, the far right hand side, um, moving from the the low of 35.48 moving up to the the top which is uh, over here 35.52 that is not quite um, uh, your nine ticks uh, that, that you require um, so um, your nine tick range chart would not be um, it would all be compressed into into a single bar um, let me give you an, another example um, if that was not clear the this is uh, again the the NQ continuous contract one minute. This is on the the ninth of May, and I am particularly interested in in this um, opening play here. That as the market opened um, at nine thirty, uh, the cash market that that is, there were two bearish candles on the one minute chart moving down. And then there were uh, three bullish candles moving up. I, I count that as a bullish candle, a higher high and, and a higher low. Um, and then it retraced um, all the way down. So that's on, on a one minute chart. Um, if we compare this exact same price action on a, a range chart, again it's a, a nine range chart, the, the same time frame. Um, those three one minute candles is represented by this movement over here the retracement back to retest uh, these highs is um, given in this um, uh, range chart here and then the 
the price movement to create a, a new low is is shown there so as you can see the the two charts are are quite different um, from each other um, what this does um, for traders it provides opportunities to enter a position uh, when it's fairly clear that momentum um, is behind a movement and it's likely to break a, a new low for example so there are spots to to enter if you recognize that uh, momentum trade <coughs> likewise um, if um, if you see price movement slowing down as it did at this point over here based on any particular rules that you you may have to identify that slowing down in, in momentum you would have identified that as another potential entry point to to go short and to break this low over here on a one minute chart uh, it would have been somewhat difficult um, and although you may possibly have used a Japanese candlestick to identify that as a um, as extreme weakness at this point over here as a bearish engulfing pattern it broke higher and then it closed lower um, that would have been a sign of, of weakness um, but uh, these retracements and a uh, slowdown in momentum at this point is not always shown by these Japanese candlesticks um, and that's why I prefer using range charts because um, it's far clearer in how um, price is, is represented um, so those are the, the, the two examples that um, I'd like to share with you. The, the next is to discuss static versus dynamic range calculation um, in real time. And uh, you may ask the question, going back one slide, is so why am I using a nine range chart? Why shouldn't I use a three range chart or a two range chart or a six range chart? How, how do I set the, those parameters? And, and that's the, the purpose of, of this slide over here. And the same method that I go through here could be used for any other market. So I apply to futures market. Um, it's, it would equally apply to stocks. It would equally apply to, to Forex. And let me just pull over a um, chart here. So this is real time. Um, we are now on the 14th of May. Uh, the time now is 1 uh, p.m. Um, things have slowed down as you can see. Price is, is range bound in the, uh, the ES uh, continuous uh, contract. And what I've included here at the bottom is the average true range which you can find in your list of, of indicators. Um, I've selected a, a 50 period um, ATR. Um, and Using that data, I'm, I'm going to zoom out. You, you'll see that when the the cash market opened, uh, there's an increase in in volatility <coughs> and in eventual tapering off overnight. There's a very little volatility that takes place. If we go to the previous day, the cash open happened here at at 9:30. There's an increase in volatility and a tapering off, and that same pattern uh, repeats itself throughout an increase in volatility and a tapering off. Well, the the way that I use the average true range. Uh, to determine what the range should be of uh, my range bar charts is I look at the ATR, a 50 period, and then I identify where the maximum range is. So at this point over here, the highest range achieved on that day uh, would be 0.877, as you can see on the far right hand side, uh, 0.877. And what I do is I round it down to the, the nearest tick. Um, so rounding it down would be 0.75, uh, which would be ar around here. 0.75 would then be the equivalent of, of three ticks um, on a range bar chart. Um, a tick, uh, one point is equivalent to, to four ticks. Um, one tick is then 0.25. Um, if I'm rounding it down from there to 0.75, it means that I'm using a three tick uh, range chart. So let's do that. Let's change it to a three tick range chart. I use the range no gap and let's make it a three tick value for the range no gap bar and let's hit OK. <coughs> OK, so here we have it is a three tick range bar chart. The um, bars are overlapping so let me just zoom in a little bit okay and um, there you you have it so every single bar uh, that you see here is a maximum of three ticks in, in height um, 
and um, for each additional bar to be created it must surpass that um, that number of, of ticks that we set which is three ticks um, and here you'll be able to to see then the the price action a confirmation that your uh, range bar chart is working correctly is if uh, you have a look at your average true range is it's constant uh, throughout it's a flat line and that's what we we expect it's flat lining at 0.75 uh, which is um, three ticks <coughs> Um, so that's confirmation that we we have set this uh, correctly, um, which is uh, pretty important. Now the the aspect of what makes this what makes this um, static versus um, dynamic is um, how you choose to apply um, that uh, those range bar charts. And and let me give you an example by pulling up the uh, that chart once again. Um, by static, uh, I mean in this method that I've provided to you right now is that we've identified that three tick range bar chart would be a good way to go with the, the ES and um, we've stuck with it uh, throughout um, and it's, it applies to this session, it applies to this session over here and if we go back in time it applies to this session over here. Now let's for example go back then to a one minute chart <coughs> And using our exact same rules uh, that we we said is that we use a maximum. We have a look at the either maximum, which here um, we had said is 0.877, which is round about there. Uh, we said that rounded down to the either nearest tick, which is 0.75, which would have been three ticks. But as you can see, the average true range is continuously changing. Here it's fairly low, there it's high, here it's lower again, and it's tapering off. Um, as it usually does at, at this time of the day. So let's, for argument, say that you would have preferred trading an overnight session because in the time frame that you're at, that's what your your schedule permits. And let's say, for instance, we wanted to trade here on the 13th of May between the hours of 1 a.m. and let's say up to about 8.30 a.m. Well, if one looks at the average true range, utilizing the method um, just uh, discussed, a 0.25 range bar chart would have been good to work with uh, at that point. Um, <clears throat> but before we change it, just uh, make a note of the, the fluctuations that you see here in the, in the price action between the times that we, we mentioned. Let's change it to a range bar chart and put it a, a 1 because that's what we've <coughs> just uh, identified and let's hit OK um, and uh, overlapping a little bit but let's go to that time frame which is a 13th so this was the, the price action here which is around 2 a.m. up to about 8.30 um, at that point there and let's zoom in a little bit more so that we can have a look at that uh, all of that action well there you are that would have been your price action that you've been working with that you would work with uh, if you compare it to the uh, one minute uh, time frame and the the price action over that period that that chart uh, presents uh, you'll find uh, subtle differences uh, between each uh, of those um, and uh, as mentioned a little earlier in, in this video, if you utilize other uh, entry strategies that may include indicators, may include price action, may include uh, utilizing the, the depth of market, utilizing a range bar chart will give you an edge. So let's uh, move on to the, the next slide. Um, and that is to discuss time frame or range frame. Um, given that uh, I have a preference for range bar charts, um, I focus specifically on, on range frame trading. And, and what do I mean by that is that rather than utilizing approaches adopted by most traders where they are focusing on various different time frames, um, and those time frames would be, for example, utilizing a 30-minute chart as your context time frame, uh, and then dropping down to a five minute chart and utilizing that as your your entry uh, time frame I instead focus on range frame uh, trading so I would rather focus on for example utilizing an 18 range um, a, a range bar chart for the, the NQ 
uh, for example as my context range chart and then my entry range chart would be a nine tick uh, uh, range bar chart um, and utilizing this slightly different approach will uh, give you an edge I believe um, in your trading when you use range bar charts what it will also do for you is it will give you a slightly different perspective and and I believe a an accurate perspective on how price fluctuates um, especially when you use different indicators um, and let me give you an example over here is um, I'll come back to the same chart over here if you're a particular trader that enjoys using um, stochastics uh, let me go down to my um, stochastic uh, indicator uh, pull up a stochastic chart and let me uh, plot that there I'm going to remove the average uh, true range we've already discussed that um, and what I, I would strongly encourage you to do is to take a time frame based chart and plot a stochastic and then take a range bar chart and plot a stochastic uh, on it and compare how price fluctuates in the stochastic based on the two different type of, of bar charts um, and uh, you'll find some surprising uh, results um, in that um, and as you can see here that would have been a good buy point this would be a, a good buy point over here divergence taking place in the in the stochastic um, sell point would have been up here so I wouldn't really have sold that point there but I would have considered doing uh, over up here so that would have been another sell opportunity uh, another sell opportunity over here this would have been a, a, a buy opportunity although it didn't really continue too much higher it div did drift higher before uh, continuing lower so if you use a uh, range bar chart with the current indicators that you're using it may give you a far more accurate and um, um, uh, nuanced uh, perspective on on trading so uh, consider that and and do that in your in your trading the next is if you don't use indicators at all like like I do um, I prefer having nothing on my chart uh, at all except price um, and um, using range bar charts will give you a unique perspective on on price action um, I also utilize it in, in conjunction with the uh, the DOM the depth of, of market because as price fluctuates in the, in the DOM based on the the pressures around the the bid and the and the ask the inside bid and the inside ask and also outside of the the inside bid and, and ask um, each uh, tick movement contributes towards the creation of a range bar um, and um, if you get to to see how the the two interact uh, with each other and how price action moves around the or, or rather how price fluctuates within the the depth of market and how it then creates range bar charts um, for that you'll see some interesting relationships there so um, in closing then what do we do with uh, with time given that we've discussed range bar charts and that it has uh, only a focus on on price and price volatility um, how does time feature in it do we just uh, exclude it all together um, and in range bar charts uh, yes you do it's it's no longer there but um, let me pull up um, let me pull up that uh, same chart uh, over here and uh, just remove the, the stochastic and, and show you that in, in the range bar chart the uh, the x-axis here at the at the bottom where time is traditionally uh, printed on time-based charts you'll see that the the increments between each of these equally spaced portions are, are not the same so that's from 1009 and goes through to 1111 um, so that's one increment and then from 1111 to 1152 uh, the time there would have been 41 minutes but then the time between that point and that point is not exactly 41 minutes and then the um, from that point to there 1248 through to um, 305 it's uh, one single increment so what I'm saying in in that is that time um, in range bar charts do not play have an important role to play however um, and I'll address this in subsequent videos is time is important to consider um, uh, particularly in relation to the the question of how is price um, achieving what it is currently trying to do um, based on time is it taking a very long time to achieve um, a certain goal or is it not did it uh, reach a particular point fairly rapidly 
or did it not? Um, and that gives you a sense of um, the momentum, it gives you a sense of, of price action, it gives you a sense also of participation um, in that current move. And that's why analyzing time separate of, of price volatility is uh, extremely important in, in trading. Um, so that's what we would do with time, but I'll address that in, in another video um, sometime in the future. So in conclusion, what we've discussed uh, today is range by charts. Um, I've given you a couple of examples based on, on futures data. Uh, we've discussed static versus dynamic range calculation in, in real time and how you can apply that to futures, to stocks, to forex, uh, any other market that you currently trade. Uh, we've shown, uh, I've shown you the, the difference between time frame trading or range frame trading and why I prefer range frame trading um, as my uh, preferred approach and then what to do with, uh, with time. Um, so I hope that uh, this helps um, and uh, good luck with your, your trading. Please take a few moments to visit bluecotrading.com um, to have a look at the, the information that we've posted there and to also have a look at the, the products that we shared uh, with other traders. Thanks so much. Take care and happy trading.